Thank you. I often say my, my best qualification for the job at CLC is that I'm the oldest person there. So with, with age may not come wisdom, but it comes, comes with a little bit of knowledge sometimes, uh, or at least I know who knows. Uh, welcome again. You've heard a lot about the need. You're going to hear more about it throughout the training. And I also want to reassure you that you can do this. I know there may be people here with, with litigation experience, with superior court experience in particular, but if you don't have any of that, that's okay. My first case in superior court decades ago was a pro bono case. And you really can do this, your lawyers, and we are there for you every step of the way. Um, we can work with you, talk with you, meet with you, review your pleadings, and, and uh, get you through this. So my job today is, first I'm going to situate you a little bit with a little bit of general background information, but I hope it's useful background information It's going to situate you in, in these cases, and then walk you through the key substantive law and procedure of a custody case. Um, this is the main entrance to Superior Court. Um, long lines in the winter. Um, at nine in the morning. Um, there's a metal detector. Um, this is just a little schematic diagram of Superior Court. Um, DC is not a state, but we have the functional equivalent of a state court system. Our trial court is DC Superior Court. We have one appellate court, the DC Court of Appeals. We don't have an intermediate court of appeals. Um, DC Superior Court is divided up administratively into these various other subdivisions. You don't really need to know this, but I always find context useful and it'll help orient you a little bit, particularly as you are investigating uh, you'll realize there are cases that might occur in other parts of the court. Uh, we'll help you figure out how to research those cases. There are handouts about that, where the clerk's offices are, what is or isn't online, because there are a lot of things that aren't online. But so you can get oriented to where your cases are going to be litigated. Um, your cases are going to be in the domestic relations branch of family court, which is a part of DC Superior Court. Um, so you are in DC Superior Court, subdivision family court, sub subdivision the domestic relations branch. And in fact, your cases will typically have a case number that um, has the letters DRB, domestic relations branch. So it'll be 2019 DRB 1234. Um, our one thing I just like to point out, even though it probably won't have a direct impact on, on, on most of the cases, our judges actually rotate, unlike some state courts, um, where you're permanently a criminal judge, civil judge, surrogate judge, whatever, our judges rotate. But the rotations are very long, so it's very likely you'll have the same judge from beginning to end, but January 1st is a big rotation moment, so we'll, we will you should keep your eye out for that, and we'll we'll also try to let you know if we we spot that your your judge is changing. But typically, um, you'll have the same judge from beginning to end. All righty. So I've already told you that um, custody cases are going to be filed in the domestic relations branch of Superior Court. Let me also mention because I wrote it down but forgot to. Uh, no, I'm going to mention it later. I won't mention it now. Um, D.C. Superior Court has two kinds of judicial officers, associate judges and magistrate judges. Again, it's not something that you really have to be concerned about. The, uh, prom at this point, I think all custody cases are still being heard by associate judges and not magistrate judges. Fundamentally, associate judges and magistrate judges have virtually identical powers. So if the system changes and for some reason your case is assigned to a magistrate judge, we'll explain what that means. But number one, it won't be. And number two, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I won't bore you with the history of why there are two kinds of judicial officers in DC, because again, it won't really have any impact on you. Um, but I just, I find these kinds of things helpful because it prevents confusion. To know that something doesn't matter sometimes helps you realize, okay, I see that there are these two kinds of judicial officers. Do I care? No. All righty. There is no right to counsel in uh, custody cases. And as Jen um, hinted, um, at any given time, um, 
over 80 percent of uh, in over 80 percent of cases at least one party is unrepresented and in fact often both parties are unrepresented so frankly not only are you providing an enormous service to your client who is your you know and that's your main goal and also to the family but judges are absolutely thrilled to have you there um, because it makes cases run more smoothly more efficiently and you know, there is a real prospect of settlement in these cases. It's not that settlement is the goal, your client's goals are the goals, but often your client's goals can be achieved by settlement, and having a lawyer involved is really critical in terms of, of reaching a settlement, frankly. I think it's one of the most important things that helps cases settle. But again, settle on terms that are acceptable to your client, because as with any case, you are there to zealously advocate for your client's goals, but you're there to counsel your client about the options and the pros and cons. Uh, the government is in no way involved in these cases. They're private civil cases. The child is not a party. You'll learn that um, the court has the authority to appoint a guardian ad litem for a child, a lawyer who advocates for the child's best interests. You might ask for that. The other party might ask for that. The judge might do it sua sponte, or it might not happen at all. Uh, but the child isn't isn't automatic isn't a party and and certainly does not automatically get a GAL and probably in the majority of cases there are not GALs. We just want to mention sort of two other kinds of cases again mostly to avoid confusion and a little bit to help you get situated in some scenarios that you may be faced with. You won't always be faced with these scenarios. There may be cases in which there are allegations of child abuse or neglect, uh, typically against the parent, the defendant, um, and there may be a, a basis for that, but it may also be sort of weaponized, and it might even be weaponized against your client, that some, your, the parent is gonna allege that your client is, has misbehaved in some way. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, there are, actual court cases in which the government can file a petition asking for court intervention because a child is abused or neglected. I think I'm gonna change this slide at some point because I, I, that's not going to be the situation that you're faced with. That's very, very, that, that's astronomically unlikely. Um, there might have been cases in the past involving somebody, the parent, other children, uh, but not a case that's going on about the child in this, in this situation. But we, what we do like to highlight is that there may have been Child Protective Services investigations um, in the past uh, about the parent or even currently in the sense that um, the DC Child Protective Services Agency, which is called Child and Family Services Agency, is, um, trying very hard to avoid opening these kinds of cases, and we won't get into a policy debate about whether that's a good idea or a bad idea, but they are really trying to, if they see an at-risk child or a child who has been abused or neglected by a parent, they are trying very hard to find a caregiver, a third-party caregiver, who will agree and uh, to take the child without a court neglect case being filed. And, and there are a lot of caregivers um, who are seeking custody because they took in the child uh, based on Child Protective Services having encouraged, pressured, or threatened the parent that a formal neglect case would be opened unless the parent agreed to the caregiver taking the child. But again, th that's not every case, but we just kind of want to alert you to how you might hear from a client that Child Protective Services was involved, and again, we can help you sort of unpack that, see if there's useful information anywhere that you wanna get your hands on from the investigation. Similarly, there may be allegations of domestic violence. Um, again, there can be legitimate, <laughs> grounded allegations, or um, there may be, uh, when I say weaponized allegations, I'm, what I mean by that is allegations that are not well-founded. Um, and uh, it's, it typically involves the parents. Someone, again, may make that allegation about your client, but really what we're talking about is the situation uh, that the parent has faced or is facing. Um, and again, more for investigative purposes than anything else, 
There are cases called civil protection order proceedings in which someone can um, seek a uh, restraining order, a stay away order uh, from someone with whom they have um, an eligible relationship, a relationship by blood or uh, having a child in common. And so there may be CPOs in someone's history, in the parent's history. Um, so it's something really, it's more to kind of alert you that you may hear about that and we can help you again unpack it and investigate based on that. Um, and I do hope people will interrupt with questions, but you may have to wave your hands because I'm looking through my reading glasses, so I'm not sure, you're kind of a blur. All right. So that's just the quickest of thumbnail overviews of, of the court where you will be litigating and some other kinds of cases that probably won't exist but might crop up, but a little bit of background information about um, things that might have happened or might be going on in some cases uh, that will be fruitful to investigate. And again, there are more materials in your manual about how to do that and we will walk you through that in your cases. So let's turn to substantive law, um, the substantive law of custody, and then we will walk you through the procedure of, of a custody case. OK, 